Um, a very great day to everyone. Mm -hmm. Today we are going to look into the concept of how to avoid clot in dialysis, especially during the hemodialysis procedure. This is the most important factor where we are losing all the clearance due to this clot. So we will see the basic importance. When we are looking into the dialysis, how we are going to do the reposition with a base, especially with a chemical called parastic acid. So this is the most important thing. The parastic acid is the most important thing for a cleaning of the dialysis. So that percentage we will be getting at the rate of a, uh, you know the minimum concentration should be at the rate of one percentage, and the minimum dual level should be. More than a minimum, at least should be kept at the rate of a eleven hours. So, what is the basic thing of a, uh, getting into the thing is how the dialyzer rinsing should be done. Uh, it is difficult for the fluid to displace the air once the air has been introduced into the fluid filled dialyzer. So, how is air introduced into the dialyzer, and uh, what are the causes of uh, air introduced into the dialyzer? So when we are doing anything, we should know what is the priming level. The priming should be maintained at the rate of 100 to 150 mL per minute. We should not cross the priming beyond this limit, uh, which we need to be very very careful. So most of the time, when people do a priming, they used to keep at the rate of 300, 400, 450 mL and all. So this may cause the complications to the, uh, you know, especially to the problem with the membranes uh, with the air and uh, you no know, small air particles will be entered into the membrane. So always prime the dialyzer and blood to be at the rate of 100 to 150 ml per minute. So generally people think during the priming uh, we need to you know, remove all the airs then only we should start the gas. But most of the time what we do is we may see the air in the blood tubing, syringe pumps and all. The syringe arterial line, you know, syringe lines will be the heparin lines. So these lines of air need to be removed completely. Without that, we should not do anything. So uh, sometimes uh, before starting the case, also we used to see any air in the header of the arterial letter and the venous letter. If any air is there in the arterial letter or venous letter, we have to remove those. Uh, uh, air from the dialysis. Otherwise, if you are not going to remove, what will happen? We may think that after starting the dialysis, we can able to remove these airs and or what is that? by tapping the air, it will come out. No. Before starting any cases, you have to see any air particles are there in the header or not. Generally, we used to invert the dialyzer and then we do the uh, we do the priming and all. So generally, when you are doing the priming. The air which is going to enter basically from the arterial header. So arterial header should be free of air. All air particles should be removed. And syringes or any air particles are there. That also, that air need to be removed completely and it should be primed. So most important things we have to understand, air is a death to a dialyzer. If any air enter into a dialyzer, that means the 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 air once it is entered and blood is also having a contact both air and blood contacts together there will be chances of a clotting will be high so air can also be uh, uh, fractured into uh, micro bubbles that air lock pores in the membrane itself so don't think if air and blood are going to contact sure there will be more chances of a membrane block. The particular membrane if air enters and blood along with that, so there is maybe a chances of a block in the membrane. That is why we used to say whenever the, in the termination, the people wants to terminate with a, a saline air termination, they will say. That means saline will go back and then follows with the air. So what will happen? Once the saline and goes back with the air means there will be more chances of a clot in the line. 
So this micro air bubble, how to prevent it? How this micro air bubbles is formed is most of the time the people used to uh, while priming or when they see any air, they used to uh, tap the dialyzer with any type of equipment or with the hand also. Sometimes while uh, you know uh, tapping the dialyzer, these air bubbles will be formed more and more. So we have to be do and uh, we should not do while priming. We should not. Uh, one day we can do a compressing and bring it out there. Only tube compression can be done, not the uh, cartridge or filter should be tapped. So, what is the air block? Uh, how the air block is happening is, uh, it's a basically when your flow rate is a normal at the rate of 100 to 150 ml, there won't be any problem. But if it is more than that or anything, you are keeping at a very high speed, these blocks may be happening. See, for example, here, uh, when, the, when you are not tapping the dialyzer, and we are not uh, going to touch it. So when the air is going, you know, the air is totally displaced with a normal saline. And uh, this is, a, suppose in case, if you start to touch the tapping, the dialyzer to remove the air molecules, uh, what will happen is if you see that air will start generated more and more, and finally you will see more air bubbles in the dialyzer. So, and most of the time, when you see sometimes, after continuously priming also, you will be pressing and pressing, air will be coming. Till uh, starting also, you feel a board of how long you will be pressing till the air may be coming. That is all because of your high speed of a prime. When you do a low speed of a prime, by the time you will finish the priming also, keeping at the rate of a 400 ml of a blood flow rate, and finally, to remove the air, you will be pinching for more than another 3 to 4 minutes. Even if you press it continuously for the 10 minutes also, that air is going to come to you during the, you know, before you are going to start the process, the air is going to come. So always prime the dialyzer with a 100 to 100. So air in the dialyzer, totally it is going to be a complete membrane block. So because of the membrane block, no more amount of blood loss will be there. More amount of a blood loss, you will have a more amount of a you know, uh, clotting and a very, and also you will be losing the membrane. Clearance is going to be calm down and in overall major complication you are going to see in the patients also. So, how much of membranes are blocked, that much of uh, membranes are damaged, the clearance is going to calm down. What is the priming speed in a dialyzer? The priming speed in a dialyzer is, uh, you will generally keep it around like a less than 150 ml per minute. Whenever you are keeping a more and more amount of a, uh, blood flow rate, so there will be more amount of a air bubbles will be forming inside you. So always priming your dialyzer with a 150 ml per minute. So most important thing is if you are a higher priming speed, what will happen? You can see here there is a more amount of air bubbles may be formed inside the dialyzer. So rings back the speed in a dialyzer. And uh, whenever you are keeping uh, the high speed of a dialysis, um, there will be more and more, uh, you know, complications you may be facing it. So the second thing is uh, always uh, remove the air from the dialysis compartment also. And most important thing is you can see that uh, the, the membranes which you can see here, most of the membranes are got clotted. So it is a basically, and even sometimes uh, there may be other causes and complications may be you may be facing it. Um, so, uh, coming to heparin management, the heparin pump should be always should be functioning. If the heparin is not going to function, there will be more chances of a clotting in your dialyzer. So, most of the people think so no problem, we can give manually the heparin push. The manual heparin push should not be done because sometimes we may forget a heparin giving to the patient. So the heparin should be given at a light dose by using the heparin pump. So treating the patients, if any ads are there, that should be. So the factors affecting the reuse of a dialysis are inadequate anticoagulant, membrane biocompatibility, and uh, you know uh, inadequate priming procedure, low blood flow rate, and a larger dialyzer adding delay in reprocessing and improper use of a cleaning the solution. So the blood compartment rings, you know, should know very well. If any blood go, you know, cleaning the compost, so the blood compartment should be cleaned first, then follows with the um, dialyzer compartment should be cleaned. 
and uh, especially the manual reuse when you are doing the processor. So sometimes when you are cleaning the dialysis compartment, there should be a block should be done where the water will be moving from the dialysis compartment to the uh, blood compartment under the reverse ultrafiltration where you will have a better amount of a clearance will be uh, seen in this procedure. So the so the other thing is that generally cleaning the membrane is most important thing. How you do the cleaning? What is the method of cleaning is most important technique. And the do and the most important thing is don't use any hard metals to tap the dialyzer, which will damage the dialyzer and also the thing. So do a gentle wash for the dialyzer. It is not a vessel to wash. You know something vessel washing we should not do. Real vessel washing also done in a very soft way. But whenever I used to go into the reuse room, I can see the huge sound. I can able to hear, especially when they do a manual reuse and all. So avoid of uh, using the hard metals for cleaning. So uh, avoid in delay in reprocessing. So these are the strategy to proper reprocessing. This avoid delay in reprocessing. Achieve adequate anticoagulant. Prime the dialyzer properly with a hundred to one fifty ml per minute. And other than the patient who are undergoing heparin free dialysis, heparin is the saline during prime. Avoid a blood loss and clot. So always try to give a heparinized saline for a, especially for a priming or especially uh, you are going for a priming. You should do with a heparinized saline priming. You should be doing. So avoid air rings during the termination. And the correct concentration of the chemical you should use for the cleaning of the dialyzer. And especially use a parasitic acid based concentration for cleaning the dialyzer, which will be a long effective and also all the cells will be lysed to properly compare with the, any other chemical or with the uh, formula if you are using as a disinfectant. So give a correct pressure during wash. High pressure or low pressure both may not be effective. So we want to give a correct pressure for the uh, uh, you know, for cleaning the dialyzer. Use biocompatible dialyzer. Um, thanks for your attention. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can ask over to the uh, groups. I'll be ready to answer for you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.